let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts, seeking your guidance and blessings as our parents and teachers gather for this parents' virtual orientation activity. We pray that this orientation activity marks the beginning of a productive and harmonious relationship between parents, teachers, and students. Dear God, as we start a new school year, bless the parents with the strength to face uncertainties and challenges with courage. May they be a source of encouragement and support, always seeking the best interests of their children. We also pray for the teachers and school administrators and grant them patience and a genuine passion for nurturing our young minds. We place our trust in you, knowing that you're the ultimate source of strength and comfort. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We commit this activity and the upcoming school year into your hands. May your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, through the intercession of our school patroness, Mother of Perpetual Help, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
to Olops College, the premier caring school in Marikina City, and welcome to school year 2023-2024. Join us this school year as we revert to full in-person classes and school activities as we empower, enable, and engage our learners to be future ready. Thank you for choosing Olops College as your children's second home. With confidence, we assure you that in our pursuit of excellence in education, we are guided by the updated 10-point agenda for the next five years, which are as follows. Highly relevant education, pursuit of quality assurance and effective and efficient systems, strong research program, strengthened external relations, creative resource generation, and reliable resource management. Modernization, continuous improvement, and expansion of facilities. A model school for sustainability. Enhance human resource and organizational development. Strengthen community relations and extension program. And excellence in service. It is with pride to inform our stakeholders of our strengths. We are still the biggest private school in Marikina City and we were able to attain a high retention rate of our enrollment. As one of the pioneering co-ed schools in Marikina City, we are already experts in managing co-education of boys and girls. Not only K-12, to but we have it from K-C. to our spectrum of courses cover preschool to college. Recently, we were given re-accredited status by PAASCO for another five years. We have launched initiatives that will align the skills and capabilities of our students to the fourth industrial revolution. Hence, the introduction of the Education 4.0 in OLOPS this school year. And our education is deeply anchored on our core values of spirituality, responsibility and respect, integrity, caring culture, and excellence. Once again, let us join hands in creating a better world through the Olaf's education by empowering and enabling our learners to be future ready. Thank you. The Our Lady of Perpetual Soccer School in itself was a seed planted and nurtured by a husband and wife team from Lawag City, Ilocos Norte. Mr. Dionisio Alonso Salvador Sr. and Mrs. Carmen Cade Salvador. It was divine inspiration that led the couple to put up a daycare center in 1976. It had an initial enrollment of 50 toddlers housed in a non-operational pelota court along the old Bayan Bayanan Avenue, corner Molave Street in Marikina. In 1978, the daycare center was registered as a formal school in the Securities and Exchange Commission under the name Our Lady of Perpetual Soccer School and relocated on rented lots in the corner of Bayan Bayanan Avenue and Tibugalion Street. Olops provided relevant and quality yet affordable education to the youth in Marikina. As enrollment steadily increased, a new level was added each school year, completing the pre-elementary, elementary, and secondary courses. By the year 1985, Olops was already operating under full government recognition. It wasn't long after when Olops acquired a 1.3-hectare lot along General Ordonia Street in Concepcion, Marikina in 1985. The school gradually expanded and more structures were built, giving rise to Olops' new home and a comfortable second home to students from Marikina and neighboring cities and municipalities. Alongside the structural expansion, Olops enhanced its curricula 
to make its students more competitive in intellectual, cultural, and other educational endeavors. As a result, both the grade school and high school were able to maintain impressive records, ranking among the top schools nationwide in government examinations such as the NCEE, NSAT, and NEAT. These achievements fueled the school's desire to extend its service through education as it opened its college department in 1995, thus changing its name to Our Lady of Perpetual Soccer College. Operating under the same mission of academic excellence and character building, Olives began offering tertiary education not only to its high school alumni, but also to graduates from other public and private schools. This constant evolution and incessant passion for excellence are the reasons why Olops is among the competitive academic institutions in the country today and one of the best choices for honing young minds. Olops envisions a world that is progressive and peaceful where everyone lives comfortably and harmoniously with each other, being able to use fully God-given talents and resources for the good of many. This dream of a better world is what Olive strives to attain for its students. And so, in this 21st century, we move to empower our students to make this happen. Olops aims to produce individuals who have the right character and are able to surpass life's challenges with grace, pride, and leadership. This is the hallmark of an empowered Olopsian. The empowered Olopsian is like a seedling amidst the parched land that can seep through the cracks and blossom into a healthy plant. An empowered Olopsian is one who is of good character, academically excellent, highly competitive, responsible steward of God's gifts, and globally prepared for the 21st century. In order to be able to make the vision come true, Olops commits to provide the best learning environment and facilities Develop a strong prayer life among its students. Strengthen nationalism and love for the country. Fostering awareness, behavioral changes, and engagement in practices towards sustainable development. Developing leadership with a heart for service and equipping learners with 21st century skills. Building the right character is essential in empowering the student. Olops therefore imbibes a set of core values among its students. The S. Rice, Spirituality, Responsibility, Integrity, Caring Culture, Excellence. The empowered generation will be the Olive's contribution to the society and to the world. An empowered generation is a world of individuals with better understanding of relevant issues, better decision-making, enhanced resilience. The empowered generation will bring our vision of a peaceful and progressive world into a reality.
Honorable Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mrs. Carmen C. Salvador, respected school president, Dr. Armida S. Samaniego, distinguished members of the board, esteemed parents and guests, dedicated faculty and beloved options, a pleasant day. Welcome to all of Squid School's parents' orientation for school year 2023-2024. I am Mrs. Mary Rose Labariento, the grade school principal, and I speak before you today with the heart beaming with joy and gratitude as we together gather here for this year's parents' orientation for the grade school. First and foremost, I am delighted to share with you the wonderful news that all of grade school has recently been granted PAASCO reaccreditation for another five years. Alongside this remarkable feat, our department has also achieved FAAP Level 2 status, further cementing its commitment to providing excellent education that prepares learners for the future. As we embark on another school year, Allow me to enlighten you about all of Great School's curricular program. Our curricular program is based on the K-12 curriculum of the Department of Education. However, it has been enriched and enhanced to provide a transformative and holistic educational experience aligned with the school's vision and mission. The program aims to nurture well-rounded individuals who are not only academically competent, but also spiritually grounded, culturally aware, socially responsible, and future ready. The school year will commence on August 14 and will end in June of 2024. The school year 2023-2024 consists of 207 days and is divided into four quarters. First quarter is from August 14 to October 20. Second quarter is from October 23 to January 19. The third quarter is from January 23 to March 31, while the fourth quarter is from April 1 to June 14. Because of the unpredictable and ever-changing situation, all of us have thought of ways to be flexible and come up with means to continuously provide quality education to the learners. As our response to the call for transition, we shall be making a switch from blended learning to five days of in-person schooling. However, occasional synchronous and asynchronous sessions may still apply as needed. In case of online classes, the following are needed to facilitate learning. Laptop or desktop computer with camera and microphone, internet connection of at least 10 Mbps per student, while the learning platform to be used is the G Suite for Education. All pupils will use G Suite for Education account last school year. On the other hand, we have created new G Suite accounts for the new students. These are indicated in the letter to parents and school opening sent by the advisors. If not, please notify the advisors during the meet and greet session after this online orientation. For the class schedule, there are two sessions in grades 1 and 2. The morning session is from 7 o'clock to 11.45, while the afternoon session is from 12 o'clock to 4.45. There is only one session in grades 3 to 6, and the class schedule is as follows. Grade 3 from 7 o'clock to 2 p.m., while grade 4 to 6 is from 7 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. The set schedule shall be followed from Monday to Thursday. Fridays will be spent for club, enrichment, and completion. On this day, pupils will spend less time in school, so they will have sufficient time to work on their take-home projects and uncompleted extension of learning activities. Since enough time is allocated for the said completion of school works, Pupils will have more time to rest and enjoy the weekend with the family. The Friday schedule is on the screen. Enrichment and remediation activities are conducted every Friday as part of our measures to enhance the knowledge and skills of pupils and to bridge the learning gaps brought about by pandemic schooling. 
At this time, you should have already been properly informed about the schedule of the subjects through the letter to parents and school opening, which have been emailed by the advisors. If you fail to receive the said communication, again, kindly inform the teachers during the meet and read session after this online orientation. Moving on, let's have the learning areas. Under the enhanced K-12 curriculum, the subjects in grades 1 and 2 are English, Mathematics, Filipino, Araling Panlipunan, Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao, MAPE, or Music, Arts, and Physical Education, and we have the additional Computer Education. As you can see, science is not among the subjects, but we do integrate science concepts in English, math and health of MAPE. In these three grade levels, computer education is taught once a week during math subject. The learning areas in grade 3 are the same as in grades 1 and 2 with the addition of science. Computer education in the said level is taught once a week during science time. To continue, on the screen are the learning areas in grades 4 to 6. Same subjects as in grade 3 with the addition of Technology and Livelihood Education or TLE. The technology part covers computer education while Livelihood Education is the area of study related to home management and three other areas namely Agriculture, Industrial Arts, and Entrepreneurship. For the information of everybody, Mathematics in the grade school is taught using the Singapore math approach. The time allotment in the different learning areas are based on Department Order Number 21 Series of 2019 on the policy guidelines on the K-12 basic education program with slight modifications. Next, on our homeroom. We have our homeroom period at the start of the session daily. Besides educating the learners on the school's core values and advocacies, this is an opportunity for the advisor to check the attendance of the learners, to give reminders, and to attend to their needs and concerns. This is also a chance for the learners to interact with their classmates and exchange pleasantries. The homeroom program is one of our best features as it is a complementary force that supports the pupils' values formation by providing academic, social, and emotional guidance for the pupils' personal development. Homeroom sessions are conducted because beyond academics, our service comes with the commitment to help build the children's lives through character formation. Now, on our course requirements, on projects. To lessen the load of the learners in project making, we designed the Interdisciplinary Project Approach Program, or the IPOP. This supports the development of the understanding among learners by giving them opportunity to make connections within and across disciplines. Projects are entirely on the application of the skills learned and pupils are informed of the project at the start of every quarter to give them ample time to prepare the needed materials. Next, on books and notebooks. It is recommended for a pupil to have all the prescribed books, recognizing that books are essential to guide them in the learning activities. There is one book per subject for this school year. We are also requiring the use of notebooks because the notebooks must be numbered accordingly. On the screen are the notebook numbers in the different learning areas. Mathematics notebook in grades 1 and 2 will also be utilized for computer education, while in grade 3, computer education and science will share in one notebook. This school year, we are adopting a technology integration program through coding across the learning areas. This is our way to prepare our learners for a technology-driven world, enhance their digital literacy skills, and lead them to better career opportunities in the future.
Next, on our laboratory activities. Lab activities are learning tasks which enable our pupils to interact with others and at the same time utilize laboratory materials and equipment for the development and enhancement of learning. The grade school has laboratories for science, ELE, computer education, coding education, and music. On assessments, assessments shall be in accordance with Department Order Number no. 8 Series of 2015 or the Policy Guidelines on Classroom Assessment for the K-12 Basic Education Program. Pupils will be assessed in the following components, written work, performance task, and quarterly examination. Written works include quizzes, homeworks, seat works, and mid-quarter tests while performance tasks consist of experiments, hands-on activities, in writing, effort recitation, penmanship, and project. Quarterly examinations are given to measure pupils' achievement. These exams are administered towards the end of each quarter. Pupils and parents are notified of the schedule of the subjects for the quarterly examinations through the calendar of activities for the month. During quarterly examinations, the pupils follow a special schedule. A reminder will be given as to the order of and time of their assessments. If classes are suspended on examination days, the subjects scheduled for testing on the day of suspension shall be the same subjects to be tested upon resumption of classes. For example, if classes are suspended on day one of the quarterly exams, upon resumption of classes, day one schedule will still be followed. There are no written tests in MAPE, TLE, and computer education. Instead, practical tests are given. Practical tests are skills-based examination given in TLE, MAPE, and computer education. Examples of practical tests in TLE are food preparation, table setting, and handwork processes. The skills assessed in computer education include the application of Word, Excel, and the coding integration. In MAPE, we ask the learners to apply the skills that they learn like singing a song using the correct rhythm and tempo or creating dance steps following the fundamentals. They also create art pieces. On special examinations, special examination is given as requested by the parents but only for valid reasons such as the pupil's illness or family emergency. Special examinations are administered a week after the scheduled quarterly examination. Grading system. We use the averaging system. The final rating in each subject is the average of the grades in the four quarters within the school year. A pupil is graded in three components, namely written work, performance task, and quarterly examinations. The three components are given specific percentage weights that vary according to the nature of the subject. Likewise, subcomponents are determined and distributed among the components as follows. The weights of the different components are flashed on the screen. The grades are numerical except in computer education, conduct, and co-curricular activities. The highest possible grade is 100%, the passing grade is 75%, while the lowest grade is 70%. Next, on parent-teacher conferences. Parent-teacher conferences are conducted as necessary to update the parents of their children's status in school and to work out possible solutions to help children with learning difficulties and attendance or conduct problems. PTCs may be regular or special and are conducted online or in person. Regular PTC is a general PTC scheduled by the school once every quarter. 
while special PTC is a conference initiated either by the school or by the parents to address an urgent concern involving a child. If the PTC is called by the school, the advisor notifies the parents or the guardians through the purlings. If the PTC is requested by the parent or guardian, the teacher may be notified through the purlings or by setting an appointment through the office of the principal. Special PTCs are conducted during the non-teaching time of the concerned teachers. Considering how important PTCs are, we hope that you can always make time whenever they are scheduled. The Progress Report Card The Progress Report Card is an official document issued every quarter to update the parents or guardian of their child's performance. The electronic Progress Report Cards may be viewed by the parents through the parents' portal upon settlements of due accounts. Statement of accounts and balances may also be viewed in the said portal. Next in promotion, a pupil is promoted to the next curriculum grade if he or she obtains a general average of at least 75% and did not fail in three or more subjects. On the other hand, a pupil is retained in the curriculum grade if he or she has a final general average of 74% and below or fails in three subjects despite a passing general average. Special classes. First, on enrichment. Our enrichment classes aim to enhance the knowledge and skills of fast learners through extra academic work and equip them for the off and on campus competitions. Next, on remediation. This is offered to help pupils with learning difficulties in the different subjects through various intervention programs. This is to ensure that learners master the skills expected in the respective levels and to ensure their readiness for the next one. On sectioning, at the end of the school year, pupils are ranked based on their general average. The said ranking is the basis for qualifying in the star section. There are two star sections in grades 1 and 2, consisting of top 60 pupils in each level. There is one star section in the morning and another in the afternoon. In grades 3, 4, 5, and 6, there is only one star section in each level, consisting of 35 to 40 pupils. Pupils have equal chances of making it to the honor roll, regardless of the section. Honors and Awards To qualify as an achiever, a pupil must have a grade of 90% or better in all subjects and a general average of 90% or above. A rating of highly satisfactory or better in computer education, conduct, and co-curricular activities. A pupil who qualifies as an achiever is awarded a merit. To qualify as a year-end achiever, a pupil must be an achiever from the first to the fourth quarter. Achievers will be classified as follows. Highest achievers, high achievers, and achievers. Highest achievers are the pupils who obtain the grade of 90 or better in all subjects with a general average of 98 or higher. High achievers are pupils who obtain the grade of 90 or better in all subjects with a general average of 95 to 97. While achievers or pupils obtain the grade of 90 or better in all subjects with a general average of 90 to 94. From the list of year-end achievers, the top three shall be as follows. Rank 1. This is the pupil with the highest general average among the year-end achievers. Rank 2. This is the pupil with the second highest general average among the year-end achievers. In rank 3, the pupil with the third highest general average among the year-end achievers. Honors and awards for the graduation rights, or grade 6. To qualify to the honors list, a pupil must be a year-end achiever in grade 5 and in grade 6 in all ops. The candidates for honors are ranked based on their combined general averages of 30% from grade 5 
and 70% from grade 6. Honors are classified as with highest honors, with high honors, and with honors. The top seven from the honors list shall be as follows. First honors. The first honors is awarded to the one who obtains the highest rank. Second honors. Second honors is awarded to the one who obtains the second highest rank. Honorable mention. Honorable mention is awarded to those who rank three to seven. Other consistent honors. These are pupils who have been year-end achievers in grade 5 and grade 6, but not among the top 7 in rank. Year-end achievers in grade 6. These are the pupils who have been achievers from the 1st to the 4th quarter, but only in grade 6. Special Awards First on the Subject Excellence Award. This is awarded to the pupil with the highest average in a particular subject area based on his or her combined performance in grade 5, 30%, and grade 6, 70%. The subjects are English, Mathematics, Science, Filipino, and Araling Panlipunan. Next, the Conduct Award. This is given to a pupil with the highest general average in conduct in grade 5 and grade 6. The Leadership Award. The Leadership Award is given to a pupil with the most active involvement in school activities and who best exemplifies qualities of good leadership. Next, the Journalist of the Year. This is given to a pupil with outstanding achievements in journalism and have contributed to the good of students and has given pride to the school. Boy and Girl Scout of the Year This award is given to a pupil with outstanding performance and significant contributions in scouting in his or her level. The Athlete of the Year This award is given to a pupil with a high level of performance in sports that has brought honor and pride to the school yet managed to keep a healthy balance with academics. There you have it, my dear parents. I hope that you have been enlightened with what I have shared with you today regarding our academic program. Your child's pupil handbook may also serve as reference for academic matters. Please find time to read it so that you will be further enlightened about the matters rel related to your child's schooling. In case you have questions, you may call our hotline flash on the screen or email us. Once again, I express my utmost happiness and enthusiasm as we look forward to a school year filled with renewed energy, shared experiences, and boundless opportunities for learning and growth. Thank you very much for being an integral part of the Olops family. And may this parents' orientation be the beginning of a rewarding and enriching journey for all of us. God bless each and every one of you, and may God bless Our Lady of Perpetual Soccer College Grade School. Thank you very much, and have a great day ahead. Good morning, everyone. My presentation is all about the academic support services. Academic support services refer to a range of resources provided by the school to help learners succeed in their academic endeavors. The goals of having academic support services are to enhance students' learning experiences, improve their academic performance, and promote their overall well-being throughout their educational journey. All academic support services that have been staffed for the time of pandemic shall be in place this school year. The academic support services include the following. Guidance services, learning resource center or library and audiovisual services, active reading body, coding education, and grace pass. May I now give you the details of each of the academic support services just mentioned. Let me start with the guidance services. 
The guidance office has able, friendly, and caring guidance counselor as well as psychometrician. It is located on the ground floor of Elizabeth Building beside the clinic. An assigned counselor in each level attends to personal, social, academic, and career concerns of pupils. Aside from counseling, the guidance office is also in charge of test administrations such as entrance and placement tests, mental ability and school ability tests, and other standard-based assessments. The guidance staff are also collaborating with the grade school instructional leaders and teachers for academic concerns of learners, either enhancements or remediation. To know more about the guidance services, please watch this video presentation. Welcome to the Our Lady of Perpetual Soccer College, presenting the Grade School Guidance Center. We aim to provide opportunities that focus on enhancing the pupils' abilities in terms of academic, personal, social, and career development. We offer services and programs that will help and support the pupils to discover more about themselves to be ready in the real world. Counseling Services We do face-to-face -face counseling, virtual counseling, and routine interviews to help pupils discover their strengths and limitations, explore options and solutions to their own problems in order to make the necessary adjustments. Follow-up and referrals, we collaborate with teachers, parents, and guardians when the pupil needs help with his or her problem in school to show how much we care for our pupils. We also help them who require particular attention. Cases with this one requires more treatment and are referred to a professional. Grade School Guidance Center offers testing service. It is to assess people's levels of social and emotional learning through quality skills and tools that measure skills necessary for their learning with the use of different psychological standardized and non-standardized tests. In information and pupil development, we offer regular group activities such as guidance classes, which we have at least once a month, talks and brochures to help pupils to be better people. We keep confidential data of pupils such as pupils' personal, academic, social, and career data and notes. We always follow the data privacy laws. The Great School Guidance Center would like to present our programs and activities. Career Guidance Program Mental Health Wellness Talks and Webinars This aims to provide information services to pupils, parents, and guardians by organizing activities on significant topics that can address their needs. Thank you for listening. Like us and follow us on our Facebook page for more updates. In Guidance, we care! Learning Resource Center The Learning Resource Center or library is located at the second floor of the grade school building. It has a wide collection of books, around 9,000 volumes, and other information resources for the use of pupils, faculty, and staff. We have two licensed librarians, one library assistant, one AV technician, and one IT assistant, and one clerk. The LRC has 10 computer units with internet connection, Pupils from grades 4 to 6 are allowed to use them for research and academic purposes only. Part of the LRC is the audiovisual room. It is located near the library. It can accommodate one class at a time. The LRC is provided with laptops, LCD projectors, and other AV equipment and materials. For a more effective and efficient instruction, Classrooms have been installed with TV monitors. Let's have a look of the Learning Resource Center through this video presentation. Welcome to Grade School Learning Resource Center. The Learning Resource Center is located at the second floor of the Grade School building. It provides resource materials both print and non-print which are arranged in various subject contents. Meet our grade school and preschool LRC staff. Miss Susan Opador, Chief Librarian. Miss Anjali Joy Bilemerick, Head Librarian. 
Mrs. Gina D.F. Guevara, Library Assistant. Mrs. Jeneline D. Galia, Audiovisual Technician. Mr. John Rex T. Galindez, IT Assistant. And Mrs. Angelita Arlabuca, Clerk. The LRC is open every Monday to Friday, 7 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. and every Saturday, 8 o'clock a.m. to 12 noon. The LRC uses an open shelf system wherein pupils can read and borrow books on their own. Non-fiction books are arranged by Dewey Decimal Classification Scheme and fiction books are arranged alphabetically. The LRC uses an online public access catalog or OPAC which is the electronic version of card catalog. The use of OPAC is to locate the materials in the LRC. The name of the library system in OPAC is COHA. LRC Services Reference and Information Services This service promotes awareness of the library programs collections, and services through presentations. LRC staff answers queries from its patrons. Example of this service are Library Instruction Program and Chat with Online Library Assistant or OLA. Circulation Service This service is for returning and borrowing of LRC materials. Grades 1 to 3 may borrow one book for two days, and grades 4 to 6 pupils may borrow two books for five days. Computer Service This service is for access and retrieval of online resources available in LRC. E-Resources These are LRC materials in digital format that are accessible in electronic devices. For more updates, like the LRC FB page at allops.lrc. And you may also contact us via email at gs.lrc at allops.edu.ph. The Active Reading Body The reading performance of Filipino learners in various local and international assessments has been deteriorating. In relation to this, Reading teachers and advocates have been doing their best to address this challenge. As proactive response, the school has taken its initiative to adopt the Active Reading Body or ARD. This progressive reading program envisions to help reading teachers, school administrators, parents, and learning coaches in developing and enhancing the reading performance of our young readers. Here's more about the Active Reading Body. SIPS Publishing House takes pride in presenting to you its newest learning resource, the ARB. Active Reading Body The SIPS ARB is a progressive reading package that aims to proactively support the Every Child or Reader Program or ECARP of the Department of Education in ensuring that every Filipino child is a reader at his or her grade level in pursuit of sulong edukalidad and better performance in any local and international reading assessments. This reading package puts premium on the lacking component of most reading programs fluency and explicit teaching of the components of fluency such as accuracy, automaticity, and prosody. Since fluency is an important component of developing reading comprehension, Rosinski 2017, readers in this program will be taught to monitor their own fluency and that of their peers. To achieve this, ARB adapts Rootzel's 2012 Meta Fluency Checklist. Each reading builder consists of 12 selections of varying types and themes. Each selection has 10 elements to help readers go through pre-reading, 
during reading and post-reading activities. As a reading buddy, each part should be compatible with the readers. Thus, each component is named after its acronym. Let's charge! This part presents dolge, sight words, to build further automaticity. Let's open! This part unlocks the meaning of some words, ideas, and concepts that the reader must know to better understand the text in each active builder through various clues. Let's mark! This part asks the readers to copy the words in Let's Charge and Let's Open to enhance spelling skills. Let's prepare! This part activates the reader's prior knowledge and experiences about the text. Let's activate! This part presents the appropriately leveled texts to the readers. Let's try! This part practices the reader's fluency in oral reading and helps him or her monitor his or her own oral reading performance. Let's investigate! This part presents the comprehension questions that are leveled as literal, inferential, evaluative, and integrative. Let's build! This part further enhances the reader's vocabulary skills through different exercises. Let's lead! This part enhances the reading comprehension and other skills of the reader through engaging activities. Let's end! This part decompresses and helps monitor the reader's reading progress. The ARB is easy to use, contextualize, progressive, empowering, and flexible. Through this reading package, Filipino readers will journey with these reading buddies. Riza Red Orzo Orange Gary Green Billy Blue Indai Indigo Vita Violet Marvin Maroon Tala Teal Leela Lavender Brando Brown Pressy Pink Aki Aqua Sally Silver and Jello Gold. These characters also appear in the interactive apps found on the Chrome tablet. These apps and the Chrome tablet are included in the ARB package with the intent of engaging the readers further. But wait! There's more! ARB also comes with a learning management system where scores of readers can be encoded to help teachers monitor their progress. Additionally, the LMS is a platform where various enrichment activities can be easily accessed. With these, SIDS ARB envisions itself to be the first learning resource in reading across the country that empowers teachers, learning coaches, and students toward literacy development. We look forward to partnering with you! Coding Education Starting this school year 2023-2024, to OLOPS maneuvers its directions to the next level by fully integrating technology into its academic programs. 
The Olaf's Grade School is steadfast in its mission to revolutionize education through digital transformation. Through Aralink's Coding Education, or ACE, flexible EdTech program, young Olafians will be able to acquire more valuable skills necessary in today's technology-driven world. With ACE, learners are able to make informed decisions about the development and use of technology across a range of contexts, use digital technologies appropriately to transform data into information, solve complex problems using their understanding of interrelationships in systems, develop solutions to address current and future needs through coding and physical computing, and practice safe and ethical communication in collaboration through appropriate media in different settings. Please watch this video presentation on Arlings Coding Education. Grace Pass Global Resources for Assessment Curriculum and Evaluation, or GRACE, specializes in research in test development. Performance Assessment of Standards and Skills, or PASS, is a standard-based assessment tool developed by GRACE, which is assigned to measure the proficiency level of learners in the competencies and standards set by the Department of Education for the following subjects, English, Mathematics, Science, Filipino, and Araling Panlipunan. The purpose of performance assessment is to improve the student learning experience and evaluate the effectiveness of instructions. In addition, an assessment helps educators adjust their teaching methods in order to ensure the maximum amount of effective learning for each learner. To help you understand more about the Grace Pass, please watch this video. Global Resources for Assessment Curriculum and Evaluation Grace took the challenge of providing holistic assessment service to schools, preparing students to succeed in school and life. With the challenges in online learning, assessment, more than ever, proves to be an integral part of education. Through intensive scientific research and development, GRACE develops the assessment of social and emotional competence, or ASEC. GRACE provides a total package for K-12 assessment in the new normal, making social and emotional learning front and center. Let us support the social and emotional development of students. Assessment of Social and Emotional Competence, or ASEC, is a web-based self-report questionnaire for grades 1 to 12 students, gauging students' social and emotional learning skills. GRACE's ASEC has five key constructs. Self-awareness.
self-management. Self-regulation. Grit. Social skills. Asex benefits. Provides comprehensive reports on students' level of social and emotional learning. Identifies students' areas of strengths and areas for improvements. Assist schools in utilizing social and emotional learning data to inform curriculum, instruction, and school-based assessments. Test Administration Pre-test is administered at the start of the school year, while post-test is administered at the end of the school year. Hey friend, I'm here. Hi. I know that, Sai. But before we talk, you drink your coffee, I ordered your favorite. Okay, spill. <sighs> I'm so frustrated. I want to gauge what my students know and what they need to know at the start of the school year, especially because we have transferees from other schools. What do you mean by that? I wish we have data that I can use to identify the proficiency level of my students. You know what? Our school has been using PASS from GRACE for that. GRACE? That sounds familiar. Right. GRACE is an external assessment that can identify the proficiency levels of the students at the start of the school year. Wow! That's interesting! Please tell me more about it. Did you know? that it can also help you identify the learning gaps between what each student is supposed to know and what he or she knows in the five core subjects of the K-12 curriculum by the end of the school year. Also, through PASS, we can determine the strengths and weaknesses of our students. This way, we can decide on what learning competencies to focus on in our instruction. In many ways, we can gauge the efficiency and effectiveness of our curriculum and instruction against the national standards. Oh, I think that is very accurate to what I was looking for. Right. Another thing is that everything becomes meaningful with grace because of the support that is given in terms of data utilization so that we can come up with the necessary interventions. I think PASS will really help us teachers. Thank you for sharing that. I would really recommend that to my school. No worries, friend. I know that PASS will be a big help to you, your school, and your students. Friend, I'm sorry. I just got a message. They are now looking for me. I have to go. Sure. Quality assessment for quality learning. Performance assessment of standards and skills, or PASS, is a standards-based assessment for kindergarten to senior high school designed to measure students' performance based on Department of Education's K-12 curriculum standards and learning competencies. This can be administered twice a year, pre-test at the start of a school year and post-test towards the end of a school year. That ends my talk. Thank you for listening. Hey everyone, I am Mrs. Maricor Eloteria, Grade School Coordinator for Student Activities. Today, I am delighted to discuss the Student Activity Program with all of you. The Student Activity Program aims to nurture learners' interests, talents, potentials, and skills through a range of relevant activities that complement academic learning. This thoughtfully designed program is dedicated to boosting learners' self-confidence, self-esteem, social interaction, and other essential values during their formative years of development in school. The Student Activity Program comprises three fundamental components that enrich the overall learning experiences, the co-curricular activities, the club offerings, and the advocacy programs. Co-curricular activities. Co-curricular activities are carefully curated learning experiences that serve to enhance and enrich 
pupil's competencies across various subjects. Under this component, the following activities are included. 1. Subject Area Activities Each month throughout the school year, a designated subject area takes the lead in organizing events and contests as application of the competencies taught in their subject. Examples include storytelling and poem recitation contests, quiz bees, dancing or singing performances, and cooking demonstrations. 2. Spiritual Activities Bees encompass a range of liturgical celebrations such as Holy Mass, Communion, and Rosary Praying. While the school embraces Catholic religious activities and practices, it is essential to emphasize that Olops remains a non-sectarian institution welcoming pupils of diverse religious backgrounds. Club Offerings The next component is the club offerings, which are designed to create a balance in the academic life of learners. These different club offerings cater to the various skills and interests of learners, providing them with opportunities to explore and develop their passions beyond classroom setting. Club Policies This school year, clubs in grades 1 to 3 will still be handled by the class advisors. A different set of club activities will be offered every Friday. For grades 4 to 6, every pupil is required to join one club. During the club fair, club offerings along with their moderators will be introduced. Grades 4 to 6 pupils can apply for a membership in the clubs they wish to join by completing the club registration form to be provided by their class advisors. I kindly request our dear parents to guide their children in choosing their preferred club. Additionally, please remember to fill in the attached consent form. Club meetings and activities are held regularly every Friday within class hours. Club members must attend club meetings regularly. No club meetings or activities are conducted a week before the scheduled major assessment. Instead, reinforcement activities are conducted. Here are the club offerings for grades 1 to 3. Arts and Crafts Club, Glee Club, Dance Club, and Kitty Chef's Club. This year, as the school transitions to full in-person classes, additional clubs will be offered to grades 4 to 6 pupils. Academic Cluster, Mathematics Club, Young Scientist Club, Young Writers Club, Batang Manunulat Club, and Book Lovers Club. Under Livelihood and Technology Cluster, Junior Chef's Club, and Earth Savers Club. For Performing Arts Club, we have Dance Club, Dramatics Club, and Glee Club. Social Civic Cluster, Grade School Pupils Organization, or the GSPO, Junior Boy Scout of the Philippines, Junior Girl Scout of the Philippines, and the Junior Red Cross. For Sports Cluster, we have the Badminton Club for Boys and Girls, Basketball Club, Volleyball Club for Boys and Girls, and Chess Club. For Spiritual Cluster, we have the Compass Ministry Club and Bible Learning Adventure Club. Once again, during the club fair, your children will have the opportunity to learn more about these offerings and their moderators. Advocacy Programs the final component is the advocacy programs which reflects our commitment to contribute to the development and protection of the community and the environment. The school strongly promotes and implements the following advocacies. Let's start with our environmental efforts. Earth Hour. Every Monday, classrooms and offices turn off air conditioning units for one hour. During this time, Teachers also make efforts to increase pupils' awareness about responsible energy consumption and its positive impact on the environment. Clay go or clean as you go. All options are trained to maintain cleanliness wherever they go, whether it be in the classroom, canteen, waiting area, comfort rooms, or other facilities. This practice is also extended to their homes, demonstrating their commitment to cleanliness and responsibility in all environments. 
Zero Waste Policy and the SWAC, or Segregation of Waste and Cleanliness Drive. The school actively manages waste production to foster a cleaner and greener school environment. B's important value is also instilled in our pupils through various learning tasks that aim to promote sustainability and encourage a simpler lifestyle. On health and wellness, we intensively promote the following advocacies. Water Day every Wednesday and Fruit, Veggie, Seafood Day every Friday. The Disaster Preparedness Program is seamlessly integrated in our science and health curriculum. Additionally, the department actively participates in the Nationwide Simultaneous Earthquake Drill, or NSED, initiated by the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or the NDRRMC. We still practice safety protocols in school despite the lifting of restrictions. Through Oplan Damayan, we actively conduct outreach programs. In recent years, our country has faced numerous disasters including volcanic eruptions, typhoons, floods, and the COVID-19 pandemic. The school's caring culture, a trademark of Olops, is clearly evident in the tremendous support and donations contributed by all members of the Olops community. My dear parents, as our valued partners, we humbly seek your assistance in ensuring that these advocacies are practiced by the learners, regardless of the learning modality the school adopts. These present a wonderful opportunity to instill in them the values of becoming good stewards, guided by the core values of the school. On activity guidelines. Our learners are provided with opportunities to participate in off-campus activities, including competitions and trainings. In the event that your child is invited to such events, we will adhere to the following guidelines. One, parents are informed of their children's participation in a school activity through an activity form. Announcement and reminders are also posted in the Homeroom Google Classroom, the Grade School Facebook page, and in the Perlinks as well. Two, only pupils with activity form duly accomplished by parents or guardians are allowed to join the activity. Three, an off-campus activity in the name of the school can be participated in by the pupil or pupils only if endorsed by the principal. The pandemic has significantly impacted the educational system, but OLOPS remains unwavering in its commitment to its vision and mission of producing graduates who embody good character, high competitiveness, academic excellence, and responsibility as stewards of God's gifts. As we transition to full in-person classes, rest assured that OLOPS will continue to uphold its dedication to providing quality education that empowers and enables our learners. My dear parents, we eagerly anticipate your support and cooperation to all the activities planned for this school year. Thank you and may God bless you abundantly. A good day to all of you, my dear parents. I am Mrs. Kaselin A. Samson, Grade School Assistant Principal for Administration. I warmly welcome you all to a new school year. Allow me to start my presentation with a student formation program. The Student Formation Program is essential in promoting a peaceful, safe, and orderly learning environment. This is carried out through an effective and consistent communication and implementation of the rules, examples of good behavior, positive influence, external standards of control, and positive reinforcements. Its main objective is to encourage the students to obey the school rules and impress upon them the need to take responsibility for their actions should they fail to meet the standards. The Committee on Student Formation is composed of the Principal, Assistant Principal for Administration, the Coordinators for Student Formation, Class Advisors, Guidance Counselors, and other school representatives. 
all options are expected to follow standards of good behavior as respectable members of the school community. Pupils greet one another by putting their right hand on their left chest as a sign of love and bowing slightly as a sign of respect for the person being greeted. This unique way of greeting identifies an option. A set of rules that needs to be observed at all times are imposed inside the classroom, along the corridors and stairways when attending programs, assemblies and competitions, during religious celebrations in the chapel, and when class activities are conducted in the different laboratories and other facilities of the school. The norms of conduct will be thoroughly discussed with the pupils during the homeroom period. It will also be stipulated in the revised copy of the grade school pupil handbook. Offenses, disciplinary procedures, and sanctions. The school is governed by the 2010 Manual of Regulations for Private Schools, Section K, and Title III, entitled School Discipline. Section 134 stipulates that the teaching personnel or any school official in the exercise of his right as substitute parent in relation to his students shall have the authority to impose appropriate and reasonable disciplinary measures in the interest of good order and discipline in case of minor offenses. While Section 75 states the procedure on filing administrative action against a pupil who committed an offense. Offenses or violation of school rules and regulations are divided into two major categories, the minor offenses and the serious offenses. Subcategories on the offenses includes offenses against order, against persons, against property, and against values. Let me now discuss with you the due process. Due process and handling cases, especially when a serious offense is committed. Number one, the appropriate school personnel conduct a process of inquiry in order to gather facts about a reported incident. This may be the class advisor, subject teachers who also witnessed the incident, or the other members of the student formation committee. Number two, the pupil and his or her parents shall then be informed in writing about the nature of the possible offense or violation. This will be communicated using the purlings or you may also receive an email from the class advisor of your child. Number three, the pupil and his or her parents are expected to answer in writing within 48 hours. No response from the parents shall mean that they leave the decision to the school regarding the case. Number four, if the pupil admits to the offense or violation, corresponding measures shall be implemented. If the pupil denies the offense or violation, further inquiry shall be conducted to which the pupil and other parties concerned may be allowed to present any type of evidence that will support their claims. The Committee on Discipline shall assess whether the pupil has committed the offense or violation based on the results of the inquiry. The pupil and his parents or guardians shall then be notified of the decision of the committee. Please take note, my dear parents, that there may be times when a student or group of students may be placed under preventive suspension during the period of investigation. When it is assessed that the continued presence in school might cause disruptions to the normal operations of the school or pose risks or danger to the life of persons and school property. These are the different formative measures that are imposed depending on the situations and level of impact of the offense or violation. Reprimand. This is a verbal reminder given to a pupil who has committed an offense. Written warning is a form of reprimand where a pupil is issued a written notice of the offense. Parent-teacher conference is a meeting between the parent and the teacher to address the concerns about the pupil. Counseling and other formative measures. This refer to the pupil's 
series of sessions with the advisor, guidance counselor, and or the CSF for behavioral assessment and life coaching. Conduct grade reduction. This is the process of decreasing point or points to a pupil who has committed a series of minor offenses or serious offenses. A deliberation among the teachers in the level and the CSF is conducted to determine the number of points to be deducted. Conduct probation. This is a measure where a pupil is under close monitoring and supervision. It is formalized with a probation agreement where certain conditions are set. A pupil with a conduct grade of U or unsatisfactory in all quarters may be denied readmission the following school year. Suspension is a measure where a pupil is deprived of attendance in classes for a period not exceeding 20% of the number of class days prescribed for the school year. Dismissal. This is a measure where a pupil is dropped from the roles within or the, at the end of the school year. Immediate dismissal may be served to a student who commits a very serious offense. A student who is dismissed is barred from fut future enrollment in all OPS. Let us now proceed to the discussion of school rules, policies, and procedures. School rules are imposed to maintain discipline and order. All of the things that I will be presenting to you today are stipulated in detail in the revised grade school pupil handbook. Let us start with school uniforms. The school uniform identifies an option. It must be worn with dignity at all times. Pupils should report to school in complete uniform. Here is the schedule of wearing the uniform. On Monday to Thursday, pupils are expected to be in their daily uniform. On Fridays and during their scheduled PE days, pupils will wear their PE uniform. For the new pupils, while waiting for the availability of the PE uniform, they may wear any white t-shirt and any dark colored jeans or jogging pants. School ID. The school ID is part of the school uniform. It must be worn at all times within the school premises. A damaged or lost ID must be replaced. In case your child lost or has damaged his or her ID, you may request and pay for a new one at the cashier's office. Present the receipt and claim the new ID at the principal's office. Processing of the school ID will commence once classes have started. Kindly prepare a soft copy of your child's one-by-one -one picture wearing the white polo of the school uniform. You will also be accomplishing a form to be sent by the class advisors. Security Pass the security pass card is used to ensure that your children are released only to authorized persons during dismissal time. The security pass card is released to the parents at the book section upon enrollment. Those who were not able to claim the card, it is available at the grade school principal's office from Mondays to Fridays. Parents are requested to fill out the necessary information in the card and attach the ID picture of the pupil and fetchers. An information sheet for school records was sent to your registered email upon enrollment. Full implementation on the use of security pass is on the first day of classes. Please be informed that the said ID card is non-transferable and that the pupil fetched by a person not indicated in the security pass shall be required to secure clearance from the principal's office before they are released to the fetcher. On attendance and punctuality. Punctuality and regularity in attending classes and activities are expected of every option. On the screen is the schedule of classes. From Monday to Thursday, grades 1 and 2 morning session, starts at 7 o'clock a.m. and ends at 11.45 a.m. For grades 1 and 2 afternoon session, 
Their class starts at 12 noon and ends at 4.45 p.m. For grade 3, it's from 7 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. And for grades 4 to 6, 7 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. On Fridays, grades 1 and 2 morning session starts at 7 o'clock a.m. up to 9, 10 a.m. For grades 1 and 2 afternoon session, their class starts at 10 o'clock a.m. and ends at 12.10 p.m. For grades 3 and 4, it's from 7 o'clock a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And for grades 5 and 6, it's from 7.30 a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m. We encourage you, dear parents, to please fetch your child or advise your school service to fetch them on time so as not to cause any inconvenience to the children. On absences, parents or guardians should inform the class advisor in case of a child's absence for three days. Upon return, an excuse letter accomplished in the purlings duly signed by the parents should be presented. For prolonged absences due to illness, a medical certificate must be presented to the class advisor before a pupil is admitted in class. Pupils' exemption from strenuous activities should also be supported by a medical certificate. A pupil who incurs absences of more than 20% of the prescribed number of class or laboratory periods during the school year should be given a failing grade or no credit for the course or subject. This is stipulated in Section 157 of the 2010 Revised Manual of Regulations of Private Schools. On tardiness, a pupil is considered late if he or she reports after the official start of his or her classes. The parent or guardian should fill out the excuse slip for tardiness in the prelinks on the day the tardiness is incurred or the day after. Parents of a pupil with repeated tardiness shall be invited to come for a conference with a class advisor. The following are imposed for unexcused tardiness or absences. From the first to the third case, a verbal reminder is given to the pupil. Fourth to sixth case, the first written reminder is given to a pupil and he or she may also be referred to the guidance counselors. From the 7th up to the ninth case, a second written reminder is given to the pupil and a parent-teacher conference will be conducted. Attendance probation. This is imposed on a pupil with 10 cases of unexcused absences or tardiness in any quarter. Probation is lifted after the child has shown remarkable improvement in his or her attendance after a quarter. We are glad to inform you that we are bringing back the use of Perlinks for this school year. Perlinks is our official communication tool between the school and you, my dear parents. Information about the release of circular letters is indicated in the Perlinks. Should there be reply slips to be accomplished, this must be submitted to the class advisor within three days after the distribution. On suspension of classes, the school abides by the directives of the DepEd or the City Government of Marikina and the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRRMC. Announcements are also posted in the official Facebook pages of the school and in your child's homeroom Google Classroom. The school discourages the delivery of food and school materials left at home. This is a way of inculcating to the children the school's core value of responsibility. Pupils should make it a routine to check their school materials before leaving home. The school also does not allow the holding of birthday parties in school to avoid disruption of classes. Distribution of party loot bags, especially those containing food items, is also discouraged. Disaster Preparedness Program In school, the pupils are educated about the different disasters and are trained on what to do 
through class instruction and conduct of regular drills. This is also integrated in the science and health curriculum. Parent-teacher conferences. In all ops, we believe that the school and home should work hand-in-hand -in, -hand in the education of our children. Parent-teacher conferences or PTCs are conducted to update you on your children's status in school and to work out possible solutions to help them with learning difficulties and other types of concerns. A regular PTC is scheduled every quarter. The schedule is indicated in the monthly calendar of activities. A special PTC may be initiated by the school or the parents or guardians to address an urgent concern involving the pupils. The PTC form is found in your child's per links. You may also schedule for an online or on-site appointment. Let me now discuss with you the different student services. Canteen. The grade school canteen is currently undergoing repairs and renovations, but rest assured that it will be ready before classes start. The school canteen serves snacks and meals at reasonable costs. Grades 4 to 6 pupils are allowed to go to the canteen only before the start of classes, during recess, and lunchtime. The CSF and proctors are assigned to supervise the children in the canteen. Transportation The school does not in any way exercise jurisdiction over any service vehicles ferrying all options to and from the school. Dear parents, please see to it that your child's service vehicle bear the OLOP sticker. The sticker allows a transportation service to load and unload in the school's parking area. Without the sticker, the transport vehicle will not be allowed entry to the school grounds. Clinic Even though most of the COVID-related restrictions have been lifted, we still observe health protocols here in Olops to ensure the safety of everyone in the school community. Please watch this video presentation of the clinic services and the health protocols implemented by the school. and students, we are so delighted to welcome you back to face-to-face -face classes as we commence the academic year 2023 to 2024. To ensure the safety and well-being of everyone, the doctors and nurses wish to provide a gentle reminder about the health protocols that will be strictly implemented. So please kindly take note of the following important points. Number one is that 
in enclosed spaces like the classrooms and the library, all faculty, staff, students, and guests are required to wear masks. However, students are permitted to remove their masks in an open air areas like during in their PE classes, sports activities, breaks, and lunch. Any type of mask is acceptable as long as it effectively covers the nose and the mouth. Number two, temperature checks will be conducted at the campus gates. Students with a temperature of 37.5 or higher will not be allowed to enter the school premises. Number three, students with colds may still attend school. Again, students with colds may still attend school, provided they can consistently wear masks during their classes, except again for PE classes and breaks. However, students who have difficulty keeping their masks on will be advised to stay home until they recover. Number four, students exhibiting cough will be sent home. They may return to school upon presenting a negative COVID-19 antigen test to the school clinic or the principal's office. It's so important to note that the submission of a COVID-19 antigen test is entirely voluntary. Parents may alternatively choose to keep their children at home and allow them to rest until symptoms subside. Number five. Students with fever will be also asked to go home. They may only return to school if they have been fever-free or a febrile for the past 48 hours and present a negative COVID-19 antigen test. Alternatively, parents can opt their child to undergo a 5-day isolation period in which in this case a COVID-19 antigen test result is not necessary anymore. Number six, only antigen tests performed by a DOH accredited laboratory with printed results will be accepted. So self-administered home tests will not be considered valid. These tests are effective for a duration of 10 days from the printed date and must be submitted to the school clinic or the principal's office prior the day of the student's return. Number seven, please also take note that a medical certificate or a clearance from a physician cannot serve as a substitute for COVID-19 antigen test result. Number eight, students with fever will be monitored in an outdoor isolation area until their parents arrive to pick them up. So parents are strongly agree, strongly advised rather, to collect their child within an hour. In the rare instance that the child is critically ill or their parents cannot be reached, this, the decision to send the child to the emergency room at our affiliated hospital for further evaluation is at the discretion of our attending physician. So number nine, Students who have household exposure to a COVID-19 positive are no longer required to isolate. However, they are asked to keep their masks on at all times, except again during their break or their lunch time. Number 10 and the last, students who have tested positive for COVID-19 may return to school once they have completed a five-day isolation period and have been symptom-free for the past 48 hours. In this case, please take note that a negative COVID-19 antigen test is not mandatory anymore for, uh, prior to their return to the school. There you have it, my dear parents. That's the end of my presentation for today. Should you still have some questions or concerns, you can email us at gs.department.allops.edu.ph 
or send us a message in our official Facebook page. As your children's second home, it is our utmost desire to provide all options, a safe, peaceful, and caring community. We encourage you, my dear parents, to journey with us in empowering and enabling our learners for them to become future ready. Thank you for listening and have a good day. Wonderful experience. We hope that you can visit us next time. 